should Ukraine present itself, especially uh, to, to the global world, as a victim, yet people uh, live under fear uh, or, or, and, or being tagged uh, Russian uh, propagandists only because they do not uh, uh, share the same ideology or maybe they uh, uh, stand against uh, the, 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 the decisions of the government in Kiev, which they think are not favorable to the citizens. I think uh, you can. I think NATO is using Ukraine in multiple ways. One of them is using Ukrainian troops with NATO weaponry to attack Russia. This is stated openly. The Secretary of Defense of the United States says that the goal here is to weaken Russia and that if weapons are sent to Ukraine and they're used by Ukrainian troops who are then themselves in physical danger, of course, of being killed in war, that this achieves the goal of weakening and harming Russia. Similarly, Ukraine is being used as an information war. So rather than NATO countries directly saying that NATO citizens may not oppose NATO policy, they get Ukraine to do it. Ukraine presents itself as a victim, as you have said, and therefore drawing on sympathy says that their victimhood includes propagandists around the world who wish them harm. Now, as Harley Schlanger has said, and, and I say myself, we don't want harm for Ukraine. We want peace, a negotiated peace that will save lives, that will save billions of dollars worth of economic destruction. This is the, a real care for the future of Ukraine. And the way that Ukraine presents its victimhood does two other things. One, it ignores the role of Ukraine in creating the conditions for the current military operation. And two, it makes it too local. It presents this as a Ukraine-Russia controversy, when truly this is a NATO, the United States, United Kingdom, NATO versus Russia uh, controversy, a NATO versus Russia conflict. So the best way to prevent Ukraine from being a victim to further devastation is to stop the conditions that are causing war. And as Harley Schlanger said, there were negotiations in March, in April, negotiations that were attacked directly by Boris Johnson, who flew to Kiev to say don't negotiate, or the recent statement by Zelensky, where he said that he would not negotiate with Russia if Putin is its president. I don't think Putin is going anywhere. So, you know, what kind of what kind of future does this create? And then, you know, there's a real responsibility both on people, citizens of NATO countries, like Harley Schlanger and myself, but really I think the world at large to help send a message to say, we do not want to choose sides in this conflict. We want peace. 87% of the people on the planet live in countries that are not going along with the anti-Russia sanctions. OPEC, the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, is not going along with attempts to prevent Russia from exporting oil at, at a standard, at a reasonable price. So most of the world does not agree with the NATO war policy. And it's very important, I think, you know, for Americans, for other people in NATO countries to hear from so many other countries in the world about the effects that this conflict has on them and about their own sovereign ideas of what kind of world they would like. Afrique Média, le monde, c'est nous.